Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. An Amber Alert continues for a missing girl here in the San Antonio area. Jonathan Goto has the latest details on that investigation coming up. And another investigation underway this morning after the unthinkable. A plane crashes right into a hang glider. RJ Marquez has the latest from authorities and from witnesses who saw what happened. Plus a big vaccination event happening downtown today. How you can get your hands on free Spurs tickets. That's just for getting the shot. Details in a live report. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, December 22nd. It is Wednesday, halfway through the week. Actually, for so many people, this is really like Thursday. Yeah, or the end of the week. That's I mean, true. All of our schedules are different. This is actually your Monday. This is my Monday. So welcome. Thank you. I will say <laughs> yesterday, my Sunday, waking up into the 30s, it was a unique experience for me. Yeah, but it was appropriate for winter. It was unique for December because we haven't yeah, been there right? hardly at all. <laughs> Uh, and it's it's going to start to warm back up. We're already seeing that it was not as cold this morning as it was yesterday morning. We started off in the 40s and right now we're already in the 50s. It's going to be a gorgeous day. Temperatures will be well above average though. 53 right now. Dew point is at 49. East Southeast Julie winds pretty light at about three miles per hour. There you see the temperatures ramp up. We're going to be near uh, 60s by midday. That should say midday and temperatures will be as warm as 73 this afternoon. Uh, looking at the lows this morning, we got down to 42 here in San Antonio, 36 in Kerrville, so there were no freezing numbers on the map this morning. 43 in Carrizo Springs, 43 in Del Rio. We've already turned the corner and we're seeing those temperatures rise quickly into the 50s. Looking at satellite pictures, some high clouds made their way through, made for a beautiful sunrise. Those clouds sort of shifting out at the moment, but I still think we'll see a few thin high clouds from time to time today. 53 at the airport. Uh, and still in the 30s around Kerrville, but that number will change quickly. 51 New Braunfels, 50 in Gonzales. And it is worth noting that Mountain Cedar jumped back up today. 3,440. It's in the high category. Molds are low. It's that time of year for Mountain Cedar. Again, 73, your high temperature, mostly sunny skies. We're going to look ahead to Christmas. Could it be the second warmest Christmas we've ever seen? Entirely possible. We'll take a look at it coming up in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. And taking a look outside with those TransGuide cameras, you can see the sun shining and it's Loop 410 there at Ingram Road and traffic is moving. It is moving. It was funny. During the GMSA show, mm -hmm. Stephen Cavazos, all green on the screen, everything smooth yes. sailing. And then the second the show yes. ended, three things popped up. But like you just saw on TransGuide, yeah. everything is smooth out there right now. So let's take a look at today's 9 and 9. President Joe Biden will be tested for COVID-19 again today after one of his close staffers tested positive on Friday. The president tested negative Sunday. The unidentified White House aide spent about 30 minutes in proximity to the president on Air Force One. Oxford University and AstraZeneca say they are taking preliminary steps to produce an Omicron variant vaccine just in case it is required for the next phase of the pandemic. Preliminary data has shown that their Omicron focus shot is more effective at preventing the Omicron strain of COVID compared to other variants. The CDC says COVID-19 was the underlying cause of death for more than 350,000 people in 2020, making it the third leading cause of death in 2020 behind heart disease and cancer. That's more than 10% of all deaths that year. And life expectancy at birth fell 1.8 years from 2019 to 77 years. That's the largest single year decline in more than 75 years. Despite the Omicron surge, airlines are in the midst of a holiday surge of their own. Several airlines say they expect Christmas time flights to be even more full than around Thanksgiving. More than 2 million people a day passing through TSA checkpoints five days straight all the way through Monday. If you haven't shipped your holiday gifts yet, you're running out of time. Today is your last chance to be sure your packages will make it on time. Nearly two and a half billion pieces of mail will be processed by USPS this week. The United States had its slowest population growth on record this year. New Census Bureau figures released Tuesday shows that our population grew in 2021 by only about 392,000 people. That is 0.1% growth, the lowest rate ever recorded. It is also the first time since 1937 that the U.S. population grew by less than a million people. Several new films are arriving today, including The Matrix Resurrections featuring Keanu Reeves. 
A prequel to the first two Kingsman movies also hits theaters, and Sing 2 brings a rock star lion to life. NASA is delaying their highly anticipated launch of a new generation of space telescopes because of expected bad weather. The James Webb Space Telescope should replace the Hubble Space Telescope as the world's most powerful complex space observatory. It is now set to launch on Christmas morning. SpaceX's Crew Dragon capsule began its journey to the International Space Station early yesterday morning and arrived to the ISS today with over 6,500 pounds of supplies, including roasted turkey, green beans, and other foods, and Christmas presents for the crew. And that's today's Nine at Nine. And it's been nearly 48 hours and there's still no sign of three-year-old Lena Kiel, the little girl who disappeared from a playground inside her apartment complex. Police have set up a command post near that apartment community located on Fredericksburg Road. All of this happening on the city's northwest side. Our Jonathan Cotto has been at the complex throughout the morning and he has the latest. Another day has passed and the tension is increasing as the search for the three-year-old girl who was last seen at this apartment complex continues. San Antonio police at every entry searching every vehicle that enters and leaves the property. Three-year-old Lena Kiel disappeared on Monday evening from these apartments, the Vias del Cabo, located on the 9400 block of Fredericksburg Road near Medical Center on the city's northwest side. Police say Lena was at a playground inside of this apartment community with her mother and other children between 5 and 6 p.m. Lena was wearing a black jacket, red dress, and black shoes when she disappeared. She weighs about 55 pounds and had her shoulder length hair in a ponytail. Police believe the child may be in danger. Anyone with information on the disappearance of the girl is asked to call SAPD's missing person unit at 207-7660. We'll continue to stay on top of this story and bring you any updates at noon. Reporting on the city's northwest side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. And some top stories we're following today. Two people are in the hospital after two men broke into a west side home and opened fire. As we know right now, it happened around 1.30 this morning at an apartment complex on Horrell Drive near Marbach Road. Now take a look. That's where police say the men kicked down a door on one of the units, started shooting at a man inside. One of those bullets went through the wall, hitting a woman inside another apartment. Both victims taken to the hospital. Luckily, both expected to recover. And San Antonio police are investigating another shooting incident over on the west side. It happened around 9 last night on Tampico Street near San Carlos. Now, police say a man was going to check on his son at his ex's home. That's when a fight broke out between the man and the woman's new boyfriend. Investigators say someone pulled out a gun and one of the two men was shot in the neck. That person was taken to the hospital and is expected to be okay. Police are now looking for the shooter. Well, the city of San Antonio hosting the miracle at Travis Park. It is a vaccine event encouraging families to get vaccinated. Erica Hernandez joins us live from Travis Park with more about today's event. And Erica, we hear there may be some Spurs tickets involved. That's right, Stephanie. There is a nice Spurs incentive if you get a vaccine today. I'll have more about that in just a bit. But first, today's pop-up clinic starts at 10 a.m. until 5 p.m. As you can see right behind me, they are setting up now. Metro Health will offer the Pfizer, Moderna, Johnson & Johnson, and flu vaccines at no cost to eligible residents ages 5 and older. Booster and third doses are also available. Now let's talk those incentives. Anybody who gets any shot today will get a Spurs game voucher and each voucher is good to redeem two game tickets online. HEB gift cards will also be available for those who complete their vaccine series. Now this is all while supplies last. Again, this clinic starts at 10 a.m. until 5 p.m. here at Travis Park. VIA is also providing free transportation to this event. Now if you can't make it out today, no worries. There are other vaccine clinics that are taking place. You can head to KSAT.com to find that list. Now at 930, we'll have more from right here at Travis Park. Max, Steph. Thank you, Erica. That is awesome. And while you're out there, you check out the Christmas tree, go ice, ice skating. skating. A lot of options there. Thanks, Erica. <laughs> Time now is 907, 53 degrees out. Bear County Commissioners taking steps to help victims of domestic violence in San Antonio in our next half hour, how the county courts are involved. But first, more unruly passengers at airports, how this fight landed two men behind bars. That story next in your morning headlines. RJ Marquez joining us. 
Welcome back in your morning headlines. A plane colliding with a paraglider and a crazy brawl at a busy airport all caught on camera. Plus, a porta potty is now the main Christmas attraction in one Arizona neighborhood. RJ Marquez joins yep. us right now to explain all of these headlines. Yeah, I promise you guys, this story uh, will not go in the toilet. It's actually pretty good. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay, thank you. I was working on that, Max. <laughs> thank you for the applause there. Uh, but uh, let's start off uh, with a little bit of different news here. We continue to follow investigation out of the Houston area where two people died after a plane collided with a paraglider. The big question this morning is how did this all happen? So this is footage from the scene yesterday after afternoon debris scattered all over the area in Fort Bend County. You can see this video across the street in a gated neighborhood. People witnessed the collision and then saw the paraglider fall to the ground. Multiple law enforcement agencies responded and found several scenes. One was the plane on the property of a shooting range. The other the paraglider in a neighborhood across the street. And of course, these neighbors were shocked. I heard the engine of the plane coming down. I thought, oh, it must be a low flyer just doing some uh, doing some uh, test runs or whatever. Well, a split second later, I see the plane and it all just goes down and it buried itself in the ground. Yeah, you can imagine that scene there. The FAA and the NTSB are in charge of this investigation, which has just started. The Cessna was traveling from Bush Intercontinental Airport on its way to Victoria. OK, taking you to Miami now, where officials, of course, we say we know that unruly passenger reports that are, are at an all time high. And this right here behind me, check this out, is just another example. What a wild scene here. Two men are behind bars this morning after getting into a fight with a police officer at the Miami International Airport. And you could just see the scene it caused here. Tensions were reportedly high at the gate because passengers had waited nearly 12 hours before they were told that their flight had been canceled. Police say it all started when Mayfair Serenopaca jumped on on a golf cart, golf cart that was transporting another passenger. You can see the chaos there. Police say the man tried to grab the keys to the cart and officers were then called to help. Onlookers allegedly then tried to block police from getting to the man, which led to the brawl. And at one point, an officer drew his firearm in an effort to regain control of that crowd. So according to court documents, a second man, 32 year old Alberto Yanis Suarez was arrested for grabbing police officers. See that video there. Both men are facing charges this morning. OK, guys, switching gears. It's that time of year when police well, not police, when people decorate their homes for the holidays. And of course, some use cheerful Christmas lights, nativity scenes, or even those blow up Santa's or snowmen. But a man in near Phoenix got a bit more creative with a decorated porta potty. Check this out. Kirk Erickson came up with a kooky idea last Christmas. His neighbor was getting a pool built and he decided to, well, he had the porta potty on the street as the pool was getting built. Erickson posted on Instagram that he wanted to save what was then what he called a stinky Christmas because of the pandemic and called on his neighbors to help. So they decorated the porta potty from top to bottom. And this year he decided to bring it back. You can see it right there and put it in front of his home. And it's been a major hit in the neighborhood. We actually dropped off uh, uh, toilet paper roll ornaments to go on. Not only will Santa uh, spot our house better, but it'll also give him a little bit of a reprieve, I think, in his uh, long journey on Christmas Eve. Yeah, I guess even Santa needs to make a pit stop during a long uh, road trip there. Um, Erickson said all he does is provide an extension cord and breaker for people to string the lights. Oh. And it's not causing much of a stink because people are not using the porta potty. Good. That's good. a good thing, right? Good. <laughs> <laughs> They're only using it to take selfies and make some memories. Pretty cool story there. You never think about that. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. And finally this morning, guys, speaking of Santa, he's obviously very busy this time of year, but uh, he's also been busy this week bringing some early Christmas cheer, especially to a bunch of those kids who lost their homes during those recent Kentucky tornadoes. This week, Santa brought gifts to children staying in emergency shelters at two state parks. Kentucky's governor called in the big guy to help these tornado victims, and Santa isn't the only one helping out after storms devastated the western Kentucky area. First responders also staying in almost 100 state park rooms during this holiday to give these families a good Christmas for now. Obviously, these families lost a lot there, but mm -hmm. it looks like a lot of people helping. And anytime San Santa rolls through, always a good time there. Bring it some is. Christmas cheer. You know what? Thank Santa. Thank all the yeah. first responders yeah, helping all those families. Yeah. The volunteers as well. Yeah. Good uh -oh. point, though, with the, the <laughs> porta potty, because we were talking to Justin Horn. You know, it's uh -oh. warm here on Christmas. <laughs> You Where know, are we going with this? He's got it. No, he's got to be ready for all of the elements. He's got to wear shorts, but right. he probably also has to go to the restroom at one point. And he has to stay hydrated. That's true. Here you, in San Antonio. Yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, porta potty, not not a bad idea. I'm glad oh. that people aren't using it there because right. that would be. <laughs>
<laughs> Only for Santa, right? Yes, yeah, in case Santa needs a little break there. Right. Yeah. He's got a lot of cookies and milk to eat. Yep. Well, there you go. <laughs> Thanks, RJ. Thank Thanks, you. <laughs> Speaking of Santa on Christmas, Justin Horn, what can we expect? Is it going to be a white Christmas? Or are we going to be in the 30s? <laughs> No, uh, no, and it, uh, you know, our chances of having a white Christmas here are always low, but this year, I mean, we're going to be the opposite. We're going to be dealing with temperatures in the 80s, uh, maybe the second warmest Christmas, Christmas on record here wow. in San Antonio. Pretty impressive. I know a lot of people are traveling, too. We want to get you a travel forecast here. If you're heading out the, to the airport today, uh, everything looks good weather-wise. I mean, there's not a lot of problems here, uh, especially in San Antonio. 73 this afternoon. Weather delays are unlikely. That doesn't mean there won't be travel delays because of the sheer number of people that will be traveling. But weather is not going to play a big role here. Now, that may not be the case as you get up to the north and west. That's where we're expecting rain and snow. There could be some delays up here. We have not seen them yet. And there have been a few delays across the northeast with some snow there, like effect snow. But so far, New York, Atlanta, Orlando, all look good. So not a bad travel day, and that's also the case here across the state of Texas. If you're hitting the roads, Dallas, Houston, Laredo, Brownsville, El Paso, all good. Lots of sun. Temperatures in the 80s for some. Laredo and Brownsville, low 80s this afternoon. Here's the scene outside. We've got 53 at the airport, 55 Stinson, 54 Kelly, 54 at Randolph. So it is warming up quickly with an east-southeasterly breeze. It's very light. 53 Canyon Lake, 51 in New Braunfels. We're at 50 Carrizo Springs, 51 in Del Rio, and 55 in Victoria. There was a little bit of fog along the coast this morning and has since gone away. But I think next couple of mornings, expect to see some fog. Dew ports are trying to rise a little bit, and as that moisture surges back in, you'll see some fog develop. Right now, dew points are in the 40s. That's not bad. That's in the dry territory. But you'll start to see some 50s, I think, creeping back in. And so we'll start to see a little more mugginess return to the forecast. For today, 73. Mostly sunny, southwesterly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Notice temperatures won't get all that chilly tonight. We will drop into the 50s, but I think we can say goodbye to the 30s and 40s for a while. And as we look at the future cast visibility tomorrow, notice by about 7 a.m. we're seeing fog develop. At least this computer model thinks so here on the I-35 corridor and then spreading maybe into the hill country a little bit. And then it will take until probably 10, 11 o'clock for it to dissipate before the sun comes out. Despite that, temperatures are going to be warm. 73 degrees today, 76 tomorrow, and then we get into the 80s for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. The record for Christmas Day, impressively, is uh, 90 degrees. Uh, and so we're not going to get there, but we will, we will get into the uh, low to mid 80s. Uh, 83 on Sunday, 80 on Monday. So we're well above average here across the board. Uh, it's, it's just going to be a warm, warm stretch here as we finish out December. There's no doubt about it. So the extended forecast, we're going to go 75 again tomorrow. Morning clouds and fog, I think Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And then uh, next week we may see a little bit of that too. But the, the afternoons will be mostly sunny. So uh, no rain in the forecast. And Santa, yes, he will be, he will be hot. Yes. As he travels <laughs> here across South Texas. E even those morning lows are in the 50s and 60s by the time Christmas rolls around. Yeah, he'll have a dry fit suit on. Sure, oh. he, he's, <laughs> he makes changes. He's yeah. adaptable. He knows, he knows what's going on. He does. Yeah. Thank you, Justin. He watches Justin Horn. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I feel good about that. He just made his day. Good. <laughs> Time now, just about 920, 54 degrees out. And as we head to break, let's look at the roads, the trans guide. Now there's something going on. Uh, I-10 at Crossroads, I don't know if that's a normal build up there, but you might want to avoid that area. Traffic moving a little bit slow in that direction. And a lot more here on GMSA at 9 a.m. Still had pots and pans, handy tools to have around the holidays, but how many do you need? Next, a look at some pots that are multi-purpose and how you can actually save some money when you're looking for the perfect set. Good morning and welcome back. If you're looking for some holiday help in the kitchen, we may have some answers for you. Many of you had a lot of cooking to do. Holidays right around the corner, but here's the thing. You don't need a ton of pots and pans. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moore. It shows us which ones can multitask and the best part is you don't have to spend a fortune. Michael Coppola inherited his grandma's 1950s cast iron skillets. He refurbished them because he loves their versatility. Dutch baby. 
they're really good about you know going from stovetop to to in the in the oven and being able to take uh, take high temperatures. Maybe you've accumulated a lot of pots and pans, but how many do you really need? There are a couple of pans that you can cook almost anything in because of the material they're made of. So if you're looking to simplify, she says consider one of these that do it all: the cast iron skillet or the Dutch oven. Dutch ovens are enameled cast iron pots that maintain extremely high or low temperatures. So they're great for searing steak or slow cooking stews, and they're super easy to clean. Consumer Reports recommends this $80 six quart lodge Dutch oven. It even turned out perfect bread. It withstands heat up to 500 degrees and can be used on an induction cooktop. Next, the cast iron skillet. It's extremely durable and can take high heat. You can bake cornbread for a crowd or brown delicate fish to perfection. CR recommends this Tramontina fry pan. The side handle is helpful and it pours from both sides. Now, what about the popular always pan? Consumer Reports says the nonstick surface can't sear as well as cast iron because it can't be used over a high flame. Metal utensils aren't recommended and it can't go in the oven. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. All right, so a lot ahead here on GMSA at 9 a.m. RJ back with a preview of today's KSAT News Now, where we will crown a new San Antonio Tamales champion. And we're going to take you back live to Travis Park, where Erica Hernandez has the details on how you can land some free Spurs tickets just for getting your vaccine. Good morning and welcome back. So this morning's KSAT News Now, all about tamales. Our tasty tamales showdown wrapping up today. So a San Antonio restaurant will win the top tamale crown. And we will also get a little bit of a history lesson about why tamales are such a big part of the holidays and the culture in Texas. RJ is back with Alicia Pereira to give us a preview. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Let me tell you, I just like ran in here. <laughs> she <right> literally <laughs> did. <laughs> I mean, if you could see us back here, we were scrambling to put on some mics and yeah, so. Uh, we made <laughs> Thank it. You, and Alicia. all for the tamales. Yes, all for the tamales. Got to do it for the tamales. Um, so guys, today on KSAT News Now, we will reveal the champion here for our taste Tamale showdown. We were down to three finalists. Tamale Boy, you can see him right there, Del Rio, and Teyes Tamales. Alicia, this has been a down to the wire battle here. Yeah, I mean, heated competition. Tamale Boy has been doing really well <laughs> and he's been sharing it on social media. So yeah. obviously that matters a lot, especially to this audience because KSET News Now is a streaming. Mm -hmm. Newscast. So. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So this is something that we did earlier this year with uh, tacos, and so now we extend it to tamales because, of course, they are a big part of our history here in South Texas. They're a big part of our culture and the heritage. Um, I know that uh, we talked to a, a UTSA professor right there, Ellen Rios Clark, about uh, sort of the culture and what is, what does it mean to you, Alicia, when you think about tamales and just being together with family? It's literally unwrapping a gift. Oh, nice. You're literally <laughs> unwrapping yeah. a gift on your table. So it's mm -hmm. a holiday staple. It's a staple for many cultures. Um, you just look at Latin America and different countries have a different version of a tamal. So, I mean, here in San Antonio, bean and cheese in Mexico, you don't find that. Mm. So it just varies by uh, region and, and each home is different, what they put into it. Mm -hmm. And you know, the abuelitas are the ones that have the last say. <laughs> I, no, that's a great point because that's something that Dr. Clark mentioned and uh, you'll hear about this more on KSAT News Now at 11 is just about how these stories have been passed down. Yeah. So we're talking about generations of families passing down these stories is a big part of the tamaladas and everything, just the process of making tamales. Yes, and even the recipes, right? Because our yes, grandmas are like, you right. put a pinch of salt, not mm -hmm. a cup of whatever. Uh, you know, there's no right. actual comino? measurement. Yeah. You got so. some comino in there? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I've never made tamales. <laughs> if you want to oh, tune in boy. today at 11 a.m., you can stream it on YouTube too, uh, mm -hmm. our Facebook, KSAT Facebook's Live. Or yes. Ksat.com. Yeah, Ksat.com. We're on all sorts of different platforms. And again, uh, just want to let you guys know, people that have been watching, we are actually going to be off for the rest of this week. So uh, yeah, so this is going to be our final episode. Again, just um, announcing our tamale champion. I always say this is the the world's best tamale challenge right here. <laughs> <Only one. laughs> That's a great way to go out with tamales, right? <laughs> it is, yeah. So uh, last show for this week, but then we'll be back uh, next week right. for more uh, KSAT News now. All right. Hopefully more tamales mm -hmm. next year as well. Oh, always. Hopefully. Always tamales. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thanks, guys.
And here at home as COVID cases are starting to go back up, the city here in the city, Metro Health is encouraging residents to get vaccinated and they have a chance to do so today. That's right, Eric Hernandez. Join us live from Travis Park, special vaccine event. So what's going on, Erica? Hey, Max. So right now this event is about to get started at 10 a.m. And Michelle from Metro Health is joining me now to talk a little bit about how this kind of all came about, this pop-up clinic. Absolutely. So I got a call at the beginning of December from Reverend James S. Brown with Joshua House of Worship asking, uh, just telling me that God had laid this on his heart to do because there were a lot of people in his community that um, were really hesitant on receiving the vaccine. He was concerned about his family members. Um, so I said, yeah, let's see what we can do. And we were able to to pull this together um, just so quickly, especially with all of our um, partners coming together, SAFD, um, COSA, everyone has really worked together to make this a success and, and we're just looking forward to getting the day started. And you, you mentioned those partners, one of those today being the Spurs. That's part of some of the incentives that you're hoping people will come out for. Absolutely. So anyone who's coming out today to receive a vaccine, they will receive one voucher apiece for two electronic tickets to a Spurs game, a local game. And then we will also have a drawing at the end of the event for a family pack of tickets. And I believe that they're courtside. That's a good incentive. I know. <laughs> Too bad I can't use those. <laughs> so talk about how the process will kind of work. You know, you kind of have things spread out here in Travis Park. How will that look when you come down here? Absolutely. So when anybody is coming down, and by the way, if you let Via know that uh, you're coming to get a vaccine, the ride is free to and from the event. We also have parking available. Um, but when individuals or families arrive, they're just going to take any one of the sidewalks that's leading over to our two immunization tents. They can get registered, hang out, uh, wait until we can vaccinate them. Then we will have them sit in our observation area. And then once they're done, if they qualify for a one hundred dollar HEB incentive card. We'll get that in their hands right then, as well as each individual again will get a voucher for two electronic tickets for a Spurs game. Now, if you can't make it out today, what can people look forward to in the next couple of weeks, especially as kids are out for school? What other events do you guys have going on and where can they go to get a vaccine? Absolutely. So we we are ending our event today at 5 p.m., but our Alamo Dome mass vax location is still open tonight until 8 p.m. We also have the Alamo Dome open tomorrow from 12 to 4. And then the next day that it'll be open is on 1230, uh, next Thursday from 12 to 8. That'll be our last event until our next public event at Northside Independent School District on January 2nd. Awesome. Thank you, Michelle, for joining us. Again, this event is from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. today at Travis Park. If you can't make it out today, you can head to ksat.com to find other places that have vaccines available. Max, Steph? All right, Eric Hernandez, thank yes. you so much. I got to say, really thrown under the rug there, which is like, yeah, I think it might be courtside seats. And I was like, whoa. Yeah, that got your attention. Oh, yeah. yeah. All yeah. right, well, this is clearly not a live look out of the Alamo City. <laughs> no, there's there's sun out there, right, What's going on? Yeah, <laughs> it, it is sunny out there. We had some clouds this morning. It made for a beautiful sunrise. We got uh, several pictures in our case at Connect. This is just one of many, but a uh, beautiful shot. You kind of see the pink colors. Gives you the cotton candy kind of feel there. This was taken down there. Uh, Brook City base. We appreciate the pictures as always. Those clouds sort of shifted out, so now we're seeing a lot more blue sky. Here's a look at the time lapse. You can see the clouds coming through right there, right at sunrise. It's good timing. Uh, now we're left with mostly sunny skies, 53 degrees at the airport, and that temperature is rising pretty quickly. 45 in Kerrville and Comfort, 46 in Bandera, some of the cool spots. Everyone else is in the 50s. 56 Divine, 55 Stinson, 51 in New Braunfels. 51 in Del Rio, 57 down in Catua. And our forecast today, 65 noon time. We're up to 73 this afternoon. Humidity stays fairly low today, so it won't be a big deal. But we will see more humidity next couple days. That'll lead to some morning fog and cloud cover, a little bit more humidity in general. And temperatures really start to jump up, especially towards Christmas Day. We'll have another glance at that forecast coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. Another look there at the holdup on the roadways with trans guys. There's a look there at I-10 at Crossroads. I want to say it looks like it's going away from downtown, so I'm not sure what is causing that delay, but you can see cars are moving, but at a slow pace right now.
All right, well, Bear County commissioners just made a huge decision that could help domestic violence victims. They've actually approved millions and millions of dollars for the courts, which have to handle these domestic violence cases. And the money is going to criminal and civil courts, but that may be an issue because, as Courtney Friedman explains, it's the criminal courts that need a lot of help to clear the backlog of cases. The backlog in misdemeanor domestic violence cases in Bear County so big, County Judge Nelson Wolf had to call this emergency special session to approve crucial resources. You have cases that are pending for years, you know, case after case be dismissed because um, maybe the, they couldn't find the, the complainant. The Office of Court Administration data shows that over the past five years, the misdemeanor family assault cases left pending increased by 140.5% justice isn't served. We want to give you the resources to, to address and, and prevent. Those resources approved today include over $2.3 million to hire two visiting judges and their full staff to come help our family violence courts tackle the overwhelming caseload. Most of those positions would be temporary. The commissioner's court also approved 14 new positions to accompany those new judges, six prosecutors, two advocates, two investigators, and four crime victim liaisons. The last piece of funding included two coordinators for the Bear County Family Justice Center to help handle complicated cases for high-risk victims. It may sound like a lot, but the commissioners realize this will only be a band-aid for the massive case problem. You guys get 20 new cases every day. Absolutely. And if we look at what that means over the course of a year? They agreed to come back in the new year and consider adding even more investigators who can contact victims 24 hours after they report a crime. They also want to add more resources and funding to the nonprofit who support those victims. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. The commissioner's court also approving more than $400,000 for the civil courts to add staff and legal services for domestic violence victims. More than $500,000 was approved for new special GPS watches for perpetrators that alert victims when they get too close. That's right. So we have a full list of all the local resources for domestic violence victims. Just head to KSAT.com. Find the Loving in Fear section. If you need help escaping a domestic violence situation, help is out there. Call the number on your screen, 1-800-799-SAFE or 1-800-799-7233. Or you can text START to 88788. Time now is just about 940, 56 degrees out. You're watching GMSA at 9, and history was made this year in the world of weather. Next, Justin Horn takes a look back at some of the year's biggest weather events. Good morning. Welcome back. A record-breaking year for our weather department. We've covered things from flooding to snow. We have seen it all. And Justin Horn breaks down the biggest weather events of the year. What a year. So much has happened weather wise. So without further ado, let's look back on the top five weather events for South Central Texas. Number five, we head back to May 3rd, just days after a massive hell event in Medina County. A severe storm moved through San Antonio, dropping up to baseball size hail. It did do quite a bit of damage in and around downtown. We received many photos of large hail from viewers. Number four, snow. This isn't the last you'll hear about snow in the countdown, obviously, but this was an eye popping stat for South Texas. Measurable snow was recorded on four separate calendar days in San Antonio for the first time ever. January 10th, where we saw a dusting, then again February 14th, February 15th, and again on February 18th during our big freeze. In all, winter snowfall totaled more than six inches. Number three is a tie between two memorable floods. The first being when heavy rains began on the morning of July 6th. All said and done, nearly 10 inches of rain inundated the city's northwest side in the Leon Valley area. Leon Creek flooded and several homes took on water. Then on October 13th, heavy tropical rainfall aided from Pacific Hurricane Pamela added up quickly, resulting in many creeks becoming swollen. Sadly, two people died when two cars attempted to cross a creek near St. Hedwig on the morning of October 14th. Number two is a mind-blowing record. The largest measured hailstone in Texas history fell near Hondo on April 28th. A powerful supercell, which put down a tornado south of Hondo, also dropped a hailstone that measured 6.4 inches in diameter. It was found by a homeowner and stored in a freezer until it could be measured and verified. 
Lastly, number one, and this probably comes as no surprise. February's record cold blast tops the list. There were many records set during this epic storm that caused so much misery. Wind chills dropped to negative eight in San Antonio, while temperatures plunged into the single digits. Multiple bouts of ice and snow during the long lasting event made travel dangerous. And of course, many went without power for an extended period of time. This storm rewrote the history books. I'm meteorologist Justin Horn, and those are the top five weather events of 2021. And speaking of Justin Horn, joining us live right now. So, Justin, how do you compile this list? So, it's more or less, I, I think about all the events that we went through during the year, put it all together in a list, and I talked to the other meteorologists, and we sort of rank them. It was a little easier this year. I don't want to say easier, but it was pretty clear what was going to be number one, right? I mean, based on what we saw in February. And uh, we had about five big events, so it was kind of easy to come up with a list of five events, you know. Pretty memorable. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Sometimes, it was. like, you know, you have us, uh, not you personally, but we have stories mm -hmm. about past weather events, and, uh, you know, we were like, oh, what, what was that? But no, I remember all of these this yes, year. Yes, they were all big ones uh, that impacted San Antonio for the most part, but there were also some events that happened outside of San Antonio. We don't want to forget those folks, but these in particular, and the big freeze affected right. the entire right. area. So, yes. And speaking of that, how does, you know, 20. 21 compared to years past. Well, it's funny. We always say this is a year to remember. This was uh -huh. the, this was, <laughs> it, it, but this one, we really mean it. Like the 2021 <laughs> was uh, just an incredible year weather-wise that we won't soon forget. It was, it was one for the record books. That's another sort of cliche term, but it's true in this sense uh, that the hailstone and the winter storm in particular were big ones. Yes. We'll never yeah. forget. Never forget. So we'll see what 2022 has to offer. <laughs> uh, we're going to jump into a little bit of climatology here too. Speaking of that, Let's take a look at the amount of daylight. Yesterday was our winter solstice, so it was our shortest day of the year. And uh, now we're going to see days get longer here over the next, uh, well, several months until we get to June 21st, 2022. So we add one second today. But we sort of turned a the corner there, or we have turned a the corner when it comes to days now getting longer. Just a heads up there. And as we look at the month of December, boy, it has been a warm one. That much we know for sure. These days highlighted in red are days in which we were above average. There have been a few days, last couple days, where we've been below average. Today we jump right back above. I think through Christmas and at least a couple days after, we're going to see above average temperatures again. So far we've been 9.2 degrees above average, which is pretty incredible. The warmest being 83 on December 10th. So uh, December off to a, a warm start. It looks like it's going to be uh, ending on a warm note too. 53 degrees at this hour. We've got a few clouds out there. Dew point is at 49 east southeast. Julie winds at about three miles per hour. Satellite picture shows we did have some of those thin cirrus clouds working through the sky, but they've kind of uh, thinned out a little bit. There's not much out there. A lot of blue sky at the moment. And temperatures uh, 45 Kerrville, 59 in Rock Springs, 56 in Gonzales, 61 in Kennedy. And dew points. Well, they'll start to rise. They haven't been all that high today, but we'll start to see them jump to the 50s and 60s next few days. Once that happens, that'll lead to a little bit of morning fog and cloud cover, I think probably through Saturday. And then dew points fall off maybe a little bit as we get into next week. We'll see how that plays out, but it's, it's going to be well above average, not only with the dew points, but with the temperatures too. Today, close to 73 for a high, mostly sunny southwest Julie winds, 5 to 10 miles per hour. And let's look at the big picture here, the upper level winds. We have a ridge of high pressure that's sitting over Mexico right now. This actually moves in our direction, and this is why temperatures are going to be so toasty over the Christmas holiday. We think by Friday, Christmas Eve, we're seeing temperatures in the 80s, and that'll be the case on Saturday too as this ridge builds in. In fact, Saturday could be one of our warmest days. If you're curious, the record on Christmas Day is 90, set back in 1955, which is a pretty incredible record. I don't think we get there, but we could get into the mid 80s in many spots. And then as uh, we move towards Sunday, same story. So it's going to be a warm go of it. The afternoons will be nice, though. We'll still have some cool mornings, warm afternoons. Here's how it looks in the seven day forecast. 75 tomorrow. Don't forget, we start off with some fog. 80 on Friday, same story, 83. For Christmas Day, 83 day after Christmas, and it does cool down maybe a little bit next week, but not a lot. And we're still getting some uh, morning clouds too. So uh, an unusual seven day forecast for December, guys. Yep, pretty unusual. Thank you, yeah. Justin.
All right, thank you, Justin. Time to talk Roadrunners. Here we go. Here we go. Last <laughs> night, <laughs> Tropical Smoothie Cafe mm -hmm. Frisco Bowl start off hot. Yeah, they did. They did. And again, UTSA came into this game uh, shorthanded. More than right. 20 players missing, including their star running back, Sincere McCormick. That did not stop him from getting off to a great start. So Brendan Brady yep. got the start at running remember back. Remember the name? For Sincere. I, I covered Brendan back at No, Cibolo I'm saying Steel. we need to remember the name. Oh, we need to remember. Okay, I thought you said that. <laughs> Do you know the name? <laughs> yes, I actually covered Brendan uh, at Cibola Steel. So Brendan had himself a nice game, but again, uh, you know, you figured this was going to happen, Max. San Diego right. State just kind of wearing down UTSA there at the end. And uh, tough loss here for the road runners. But again, missing a lot of guys. Missing a lot of guys. It thoughts on the opt-out situation? It wasn't <laughs> only the NFL draft, which I respect. There's also COVID protocols. Um, I respect, mm -hmm. look, if you were trying to make a future and a fortune for your family and future generations, mm -hmm. Maybe don't risk it in a bowl game. We've seen it and poorly yeah. for guys like Jalen Smith. Okay, when there he, you go. You know, yes, he, former Cowboy Jalen Smith. Former Cowboy yes. Jalen Smith. Yeah. He played in Notre Dame and he ruined his leg mm -hmm. when he played in the bowl mm -hmm. game. Yeah, I wonder if David Sears is watching this because he had a completely opposite <laughs> take. <laughs> he went off on a whole rant saying that the guy should at least finish the season. I, I kind of agree with mm -hmm. that, but obviously they're getting you know some other people in their ears talking to them about, hey, you can go in the draft at this point. Right. You can go here. So uh, don't again, risk it. UTSA loses but they still won the Conference USA they Championship. 12-2, and two, incredible season for the Roadrunners. Quick question before we go. Uh -oh. Frank Harris coming back next year. He is, yeah. What can we expect for the Roadrunners next year? I, I think they're going to continue. Coach Trailer just signed that big deal, so Frank's coming back, bringing back a lot of good players. So I think UTSA is still going to be in the mix. Maybe not 12-1, and one, Okay. But, uh, but I think they're still going to be pretty good, especially with Frank there at quarterback. All right. Yeah. Jim Marquez, thank yeah. you so much. Thanks. Time now, 9.51, 57 degrees out. Thank you, Max. Thank you, RJ. I agree. Great season. A look inside what's being called the smallest apartment in New York City. That's coming up next. Coming up on live, it's our very New York Christmas show with Josh Groban, the Rockettes, and Steve Patterson. We'll see you soon here on live. And buying a new home can be a daunting task right now. Tomorrow on GMSA, we're going to take a look at some common myths that may be getting in the way of you owning your dream home. And as you've seen from Eric Hernandez live throughout the morning, reminder, the Miracle at Travis Park vaccination, vaccination event. It starts in just a couple minutes. You can get a free COVID shot. You get your booster. You can even get a flu shot. And here's the best part. You can walk away with free Spurs tickets. And the administrator on the scene said courtside. That's right. So look at that. A chance. A chance. A course. chance at courtside, yeah. uh -huh. 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And while you're at <laughs> Travis Park, you can look at the Christmas tree. You can go ice skating. Ice skating. It's you beautiful. Could, you go talk to Erica if you go right now. <laughs> I'm sure Hurry she's going to love that. Yeah, she's like, no, get away. No, she, she wouldn't be like that at all. <laughs> all right. So here in San Antonio, we are spoiled. Yes. Sure. But some people would say rent is getting higher and higher. It is. Year over year, it really is getting more expensive. But... Take a look at this. Let's see. Can we play the video? Yep. This is someone, this is a, a guy who went on TikTok to show off his apartment in New York City. Yeah, his name, or he goes by AJ Weber, and he wanted to give a tour of his tiny little home. Uh, let's see if some of the things that, he, it resembles a walk-in closet, is what he said. <laughs> and it spans about 75 square feet of living space. So here was the jarring part to me. Someone had commented that, a comparable situation like this in New York City would go for about 1600 a month. Oh my goodness. Oh. <laughs> Poor guy. Have Jeez. a great day. Have a great day.